It's Tuesday, it's the 7th, and we're glad to have you being a part of the program. Not so glad about today's weather. It's just been dreary, ugly, nasty, and not too many excuses to try to find to be outside in it. But nevertheless, the rains are on their way out of here during the overnight. And the clouds, even though we'll stick around tomorrow, but I think mostly dry conditions will prevail on your Wednesday. Uh, we've also got some below normal temperatures on the other side of this front through the rest of the week. We'll talk about that in more detail in just a few moments on today's date in our weather history. Nothing exciting or active, but nice by comparison. Most everyone in eastern Kentucky, parts of central Kentucky as well, registering around 77 degrees, as did the National Weather Service in Jackson on this day back in 1996. That would have been nice today. More on your weather in just a few moments. A brief update tonight, more on the situation in regards to the threat that was perceived by students, families alike, that of course didn't cancel classes yesterday in the McGough County High School and the school system, but certainly uh, kept a lot of students at home. We'll also talk about last night's Sagersville City Council meeting, a special session in which they took time to honor former city councilman Tom Frazier, and they spent little time afterwards appointing someone to fill his seat. We'll have that in other business as was covered, and we'll go through some sports news for you tonight. That will include football scores and schedules. Two more teams in the viewing area down in postseason gridiron action. We'll tell you who is hanging it up for the season, who's rolling on to this Friday night. I'll begin with our top story coverage from our Sagersville City Council meeting from last night right after a couple of messages. Lay away now for Christmas at Parkway Gun and Pawn on all new and pre-owned guns on everything from the best in personal protection to the very best sport and hunting rifles. And Layaway is available on all the other great gift ideas, all priced at pennies on the dollar. And if you need a little extra cash for the holidays, they'll loan you cash today on just about anything worth a dollar. Parkway Gun and Pawn. Hi, I'm Attorney Jeff Lovely. At my law office, we're determined to offer you and your family outstanding, cost-effective, and responsive legal services. I can help you if you've been injured in a car wreck. I'll be in your corner if you have a DUI or other criminal charges file bankruptcy and stop those harassing phone calls, or I'll fight for you and your children in divorce and custody cases. For all your legal services, contact me when it matters in Sirensville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. <laughs> There's a lot to be thankful for this November. Friends, family, feasts, and fantastic savings from Appalachian Wireless. All this month, get the Samsung GS8 for just $49.99 or the GS8 Plus for just $149.99. Both phones now $100 off the regular price. Two-year agreement required. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless and East Kentucky Network Company. Parkway Pharmacy, now open earlier from 8 a.m. until 6 in the evening to better suit your schedule and lifestyle and to help you get better and live a healthier life. And if allergies are bogging you down, they're armed with the very best in over-the-counter relief for adults and your children. Reach owner pharmacist Jesse Rudd and his assistant pharmacist Megan Castle and their staff at 8 o'clock in the mornings or at 349-4400. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms, complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair behavioral health services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results in-house x-ray and pharmacy and all the caring knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent at Hope Family Medical Center there was some discussion last night in the Sagersville City Council meeting about how some Sagersville residents those who have flood insurance could see possibly a significant reduction in their premiums but the meeting began shortly after a standard operating procedure or normal business, if you will, with a special recognition, paying tribute and honor to former Councilman Tom Frazier and then appointing someone to fill his seat. Certainly a lot of emotions surrounding last night's Sagersville City Council meeting. 
the first held since the passing of newly appointed Councilman Mike Conley's wife, as well as the first since the passing of long-standing Sagersville City Councilman Tom Frazier, who served the city of Sagersville for over 27 years. And as such, after the meeting was called to order and they voted to pay the bills, a resolution was read in Tom's honor and then presented to his family. <clears throat> At a meeting of the Sagersville City Council, which was held November 6, 2017, the following preamble and resolutions were unanimously, unanimously adopted. Whereas it has pleased the great creator of the universe to remove from our midst our late brother, Tommy Gerald, Tom Frazier. And whereas it is but just that a fitting recognition of his many virtues should be had, therefore be it. Resolved by the members of the Sirensville City Council that while we bow with humble submission to the will of the Most High, we do not less mourn for our brother who has been taken from us. Be it resolved that in death of Tommy Gerald Tom Frazier, this council laments the loss of a brother who was ever ready to offer the hand of aid and the voice of sympathy to the needy and distressed of the city. An active member of the city council whose utmost endeavors were exerted for its welfare and prosperity, a friend and companion who was dear to us all, a citizen whose upright and noble life was a standard for his fellows. Be it known to all that Tommy Gerald Tom Frazier devoted 27 years of his life to serving on the city council. Therefore, now be it resolved that the heartfelt sympathy of the citizens of the city of Sirensville and the members of the Sirensville City Council be extended to his family and their loss. Be it resolved that this resolution be spread upon the records of the city of Sirensville and copy thereof be transmitted to the family of our deceased brother and a copy be given to the newspaper for publication. Witness, therefore, my signature as mayor, city of Sirensville, this the sixth day of November, 2017. James Pete Shepherd, Mayor. And following those sentiments, the mayor and city council wasted no time in making what I believe to be the most fitting and appropriate of appointments to fill Tom's seat and absence. We will miss Tom. Yes, we will. Okay. Okay, the next on discussion is a thing I think is a, is a, a no-brainer to me. Hopefully everybody else, the council discussion has approved of appointment of a person to fulfill Tom's uh, term, and uh, I think it ought to be Pat Frazier. I'll make a motion if we do that. I'll, I'll second. second. Have a motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Pat Frazier, a longtime successful businesswoman in Sagersville, her love for community just as was Tom's, always strong and evident. And she has for years served the city of Sagersville in the capacity of the Renaissance Board, tourism, and in other means, and was sworn in last night, not just in my opinion as an honor to her husband, but also to make an excellent member of the Sagersville City Council. And in her first meeting as Sagersville City Councilwoman, she and the rest of the council heard as the mayor described that he'd been in contact, as we move on to other business, with a member of the Flood Insurance Board who advised him that if the city can meet certain criteria, residents will be able to get a discount on their flood insurance from anywhere from 5 to 20 percent. And that will go into effect next June. Uh, they came and met with me and Paul uh, last week and talked about it. So I just want to give you all up to date on that anybody that does have flood insurance that hopefully we can meet. We've already met criteria for the 5 percent but we're going to try to get everything in so we can get the 15 or 20 percent so we can lower your flood insurance. That, that's for the city of Sarsville too because we've got this thing under flood insurance. So just wanted to give you an update. That it will not take effect. Their program don't take effect until effect next uh, June 30th, I think they said. Moving on, in the mayor's report, Shepard detailed that the city currently had $227,000 in the bank, had collected somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 percent of their taxes for the year, that for a fee of $9,800, a local company was going to pour the concrete pad for the tornado shelter that sits in Dixie behind the Sagersville First Baptist Church, as well as pour some handicap ramps to the shelters in the Ramey Park and fix a slip or break 
on the walking track around the park. He also noted that the Sagersville Hometown Christmas Committee's 5K raised some $1,200 towards purchasing toys for kids after the Christmas parade, which is still set for December the 2nd. And he also spoke of some road repairs to be made. Councilman Jeff Bailey requested hours and schedules of all city workers, and the council and mayor then went into executive session with no action being taken on the subject of personnel. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. To create your very own scene right out of the North Pole, filled with all the warmth, glow, and cheer of Christmas, make a holiday stop at the Seasonal Shop. They've got countless trees, ornaments by Raz, Kurt Adler, Mud Pie, and more, personalized and customized ornaments and bows and wreaths, cool and cute custom tops by Lucky Bird, and just as sure as there's a naughty and nice list, there's only one sure way you can see all the Christmas gift ideas and festive decor and that's to step into the region's biggest and best selection of home decorating and gift ideas, Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop, where they're having their annual open house starting Wednesday the 15th with at least 20% off the entire store with other big discounts and free refreshments, door prizes, and more. I'm attorney Don McFarland. We all know that times are hard, jobs are scarce, most people that I know are struggling to support their families and make it through each day. Now imagine that you get seriously hurt while working on the job and the insurance company for your employer refuses to pay wages and benefits while you are injured and cannot afford to pay medical expenses, household bills, and put food on the table to support your family. I can help. If you are being wrongfully denied workers' compensation benefits that you rightfully deserve, then give me a call and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Yes, Logan makes the best truck bodies on the market and they also have a fully stocked warehouse of dump body parts, PTOs, hydraulic pumps, hoists, anything you need to get back on the road. And they are a full service steel and aluminum service center. They keep I-beam, channel, angle, pipe, round rod, rebar, expanded metal, sheet metal and aluminum all in stock. And if you've got a big project, they do commercial manufacturing to your specs. Logan, since 1904. Much more than diesel specialists, Black Smoke Performance is turning out excellent auto body collision paint and repair results with free quotes and estimates on everything from insurance jobs to that ding you got in the driveway. Custom lift kits, bed liners, winches and accessories, and full diagnostics and repair on anything gas or diesel from brakes to fluid changes to major auto repair. If you want it fixed, lifted, painted, customized, or just maintained, just call on the team at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 100 May Drive, or 349-8785. Whoever you're rooting for at the next big game, pick up some of our famous hot and spicy wings or try our new fish dinner at your Sangersville Lee's Famous Recipe. Or you can always just get a little bit of everything. Hot wings, crispy buffalo wings, dippers, strips, fried pickles, jalapeno poppers, cheese sticks, potato wedges, and more. The game is always better with Lee's. I can't go into too much detail tonight in the following update as it pertains to yesterday's investigation of a potential threat at the McGoffin County High School given the age of the student involved, confidentiality of course, and other laws that protect that student's privacy and rights. However, these are the facts that we can confirm today. While this was the scene I showed you yesterday with significant police presence at the McGoffin County High School as a precaution, Everything appeared to be back to normal today. Attendance rates also reflected that. Superintendent of Schools Scott Helton today said the high school was right at 93%, a couple of percent below where they would like to have it, but pretty close to a normal day and where they had been running for the past few weeks. Helton couldn't confirm to me earlier today, per confidentiality, what penalty or what punishment the student who made the post on Snapchat would undergo or have to endure 
We have since confirmed, however, through other sources that that student was not back in school today and does not appear to be coming back to school in the immediate or possibly near future. Helton also confirmed that there was nothing new to add in regards to those initial posts on Snapchat, which the senior high school student said on one post that, quote, or something to the effect that McGoffa County High School will hate me tomorrow, and then a posting of a second one to replace that that said McGoffin County will hate me tomorrow if I don't change my mind. Just their thorough investigation has still turned up no evidence of a specific threat, any mention of targeting any individual or individuals or by means in which they would be targeted. However, the student is still going to face punishment for the disruption caused. Lines in just a few seconds. Right now, some local announcements per your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. We'll begin with this one just in from North McGoffin Elementary School. Their site based council will meet in regular session. This meeting set for tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, 4 30 in the school's conference room. These meetings are open to the public, and Principal James Keith Isaac reminds everyone that the public is invited and welcome to attend. I just got this in from Bluegrass Hospice, and they are planning a holiday memorial open house for day after tomorrow, three hours from noon to three, where at any time you can just walk into the Sagasville Renaissance community. They're inviting all the local and area families who have lost someone and been in hospice care over the past year. If you'd like to join them, they have a, an ornament and I think a few words for you that they would like to share. They would like you to stop by the Renaissance program or the Renaissance Center. That's noon on this Thursday. Don't forget this Saturday, Veterans Day. They'll be honoring our veterans with their ceremony, that being the DAV Chapter 15 here in Sagersville, 11 o'clock at the Ramey Park this Saturday on the 11th. And a couple of other events also honoring our veterans. Now, also on Saturday, a few hours later at 3 o'clock, the Sagersville Masonic Lodge will have its annual Veterans Dinner. They're inviting all veterans and all active duty personnel as well, all active military personnel. That's 3 o'clock on Saturday in the afternoon following the ceremony in the park earlier that day. Then on the following day on Sunday, a veteran service and appreciation dinner hosted by the Sayersville Free Will Baptist Church and Pastor Floyd Arnett. They want to invite all veterans to their 11 o'clock church services and the appreciation dinner in your honor after church services this Sunday the 12th. That's Sayersville Free Will Baptist. And just in for next week, I'll remind you early next week again, but the Substance Abuse Free Environment, our Safe Coalition in McGoffin County, and our Endangered Child Team, they'll be meeting next week it's Wednesday, 1 o'clock, at the McGoffa County Health Department. And turning to funeral services, Jency Cottle Allen, age 80, of State Fork Road in Prestonsburg, passed away on Monday of this week, preceded in death by her husband, Elmo Allen. She is survived by son, Daryl Allen, and daughter, Teresa Kraft, and a host of other family and friends. With funeral services for Jency Cottle Allen to be conducted this Friday here in McGoffa County from the Sagersville Funeral Home. Visitation continues, will begin actually tomorrow evening, continue all day Thursday and up until services begin Friday morning. Once again, all from the Sagersville Funeral Home. These announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. A tire more than 25% low, about 8 pounds, makes you 3 times more likely and worn out tires 11 times more likely to be in a tire-related crash. Don't take your or their safety for granted. Come in for a free inspection, 6 months no interest financing, the best price and best selection at Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Like our 100% safe and secure mobile banking app at Sagersville National, we're always working to make your life a little easier. And our mobile deposit feature gives you more freedom and more time to do what you love the most. Just open the app, confirm the amount, and click. You're done. A safe, no-hassle way to manage your money from anywhere in the... Well, you get the drift. Now get the app at Sagersville National Bank. 349-3131. Hi, this is John Harris at Gateway Motors. We're having to get it out of the mud sale. Everything we have is covered in mud, so if you want a good deal, right now is time to get it. 
Yeah, no joke, no gimmick. The road construction is killing them. So John has cut another $1,000 off this super economical 2015 Mitsubishi. It's got less than 22,000 miles, new tires, and it's only $69.95. He cut this 08 Crew Cab Dodge 4x4. It's $5,000 below book. He cut two grand off this Ford Escape 4x4 XLT to $69.95. And this 2010 Honda Civic with ultra low miles, only $83,000. His price just too low to advertise. Call today for quick pre-credit approval, $0 down, low income approval, and most payments under $200 a month at Gateway Motors in Sagersville. 349 cars. few things in sports tonight while there was no sign of the sunshine anywhere in the viewing area today the sun was shining brightly i can use as a metaphor at johnson central high school where a senior baseball player has officially signed his letter of intent yeah braxton kelly is officially going green ohio green that is the senior central high school pitcher signed his letter of intent today Surrounded by family, friends, teammates, and coaches, Braxton going on to play ball for Ohio University in Division I baseball. He earned the privilege and right to try out before a variety of teams over the course of the summer. I think throwing into the low 90s consistently, if I'm not mistaken, peaking around 92, 93 uh, on one occasion. And he was grabbed by Ohio University. And based on the picture posted here and shared by his family, he and they couldn't be happier. Congratulations, Braxton Kelly of Johnson Central High School. Also from Central, the Golden Eagles on the gridiron rolling on, doing so over Mason County. Just to get you caught up, we've had two teams wrap up their season in post, and two are continuing on. Central is one of them. After that big win, they hosted Mason County this past Friday night and held them to nothing, 43-0. Central advancing on to 9-2 and two on the season, and they will be advancing to Scott County this Friday night for the second round of Class 4A gridiron action. Scott County has won their last six uh, by either 42 to up to 57 points per game. Uh, they're also at 9-2 and two on the season, and also Mayo, Tates Creek, St. X, Simon Kenton, Trinity, uh, McCracken, those are some of the other teams that are still rolling on as well in Class 4A. Paintsville and the Tigers and Coach Joe, 41-21 to over Nicholas County. The Tigers have dropped one this season. That was early on in the season on the road at Hurricane West Virginia. They're now 10-1, and and they survived the first round. Well, they more than survived, and they'll be hosting again this Friday night. Bracken County kickoff set for 730. Bracken County has won their last four They've been holding teams like 52 to 0, 24 to 0, 36 to 6 in three of those past four games. They're also 9 and 2 on the season. Also still alive in Class 1A, which is the same class as Paintsville, Hazard, Pikeville, Raceland. They're all still in it to win it as well. Lawrence County, though, is a different story. They'll hang it up after a loss of 41 to 24 to Wagner in the first round, and that will wind up their season just below the halfway mark at five and six. They had a respectable halfway finish in their district at two and two, but game's over for the Bulldogs. As is the case for Coach Easterling and his Cougars of Morgan County, Casey County held them to zero. This past Friday night in round one of the Commonwealth Gridiron Bowl. And that will wrap up their season at four and seven. They had a winning district season, three and two. But at the hands of Casey County, uh, they, of course, have wrapped it all up. Now, other teams, though, besides Casey County moving on in 3A, uh, from around the area, Floyd Central and Belfry are still in it. Uh, E-Town and some other big teams that you, you know, see quite often advancing are still in it as well. Now, looky, looky what we don't see as much of, at least, showers on the wane and on their way out. Pretty much a very solid and consistent one inch of rain, which is, I think, what we were calling for 24 hours ago, but pretty much right at an inch of rain for most all of the viewing area and even most all of eastern Kentucky as well, and most all of us seeing those showers depart. And we still... At 
when I stuck my head out a few moments ago just before 6 o'clock on a light sprinkle. Roads I can hear are still wet, and we'll see some light showers but diminishing over the course of your evening. And I think they'll be well and gone by your Wednesday morning. And in fact, your updated forecast calls for just that. Powered by Licking Valley RECC, we'll put in a 30% chance of some showers, mainly up until 3 or 5 o'clock or so. There are going to be a few out there. Not going to really add to our totals, I don't suspect. The National Weather Service is also calling for them, as I believe they will be gone by tomorrow. Clouds, not so much. We'll see mostly cloudy skies continue. Temperatures will dip further, down to about 48 for daytime highs midweek. Uh, winds may be out of the northwest, 3, 4, 5, 6 miles per hour, but that's about it. Clouds, a light wind or breeze, if you want to call it that, but definitely cooler air rolling on below normal, below where we should be. But we climb out of that hole to the degree of 55 degrees on your Thursday, and the sun makes a triumphant return, mostly sunny skies, and I think those skies will clear by the afternoon and remain mostly clear by the overnight, leading into a Friday where we take a, another hit temperature-wise, but this one's not a rainmaker. But it is going to produce, well, what could very well be the coldest air of the season thus far. Daytime highs right now for your Friday. Newly adjusted and updated to be right around 41. Clear skies that night will only add to a low in the mid-20s. Yep, that's what I said. Veterans Day for your Saturday is fortunately going to be better into the low 50s, mostly sunny, and it's going to be dry. So for the ceremony, anything you have going on at any time at Saturday should be good, I think, uh, by Saturday night, a 20% chance of showers. And I'm talking late into Sunday morning, basically. So a dry Friday and Saturday, a cold Friday and not so cold Saturday. By Sunday, though, our next setup rolls in, and it gives us a good threat of some showers to the tune of 50%, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures hovering right around 52. I think 52 is going to be a good call for uh, Monday's temperatures again. Tuesday, we might see the upper 50s. Might. I'm hopeful. Tomorrow is obviously Wednesday. It's also the first day that candidates will be able to officially file for the May primary, several of which I expect to do so, many of which I expect we'll be hearing from here on the program very, very soon as well. So we'll be looking into that in other local news and information that you're only going to see here. So be sure and please enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we hope to see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today.